Good morning, Facebook, YouTube, everyone out there in social media land. I am Bishop Curtis Alexander, the founder and senior pastor of the City of Refuge Church. We want to welcome you to our service this morning for everybody that's in-house and watching via live stream. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We hope that something will be said, something will be done for you to make a change in your life and to trust in the Lord and lean not to your own understanding and all thy ways acknowledge who him him and he shall direct your paths amen amen saints this morning we're going to be talking about looking for God in the new year entering into God's presence entering into God's presence. And the message today says, I would like to share with you some thoughts about how you can enter the coming new year with a profound sense of God's presence. Yes, I know we're in the second uh, Sunday of the 2023, but I want to talk to you about entering into God's presence. This will give you the faith to face all of the many challenges that shall come your way in this new year. You see, the Christian life is a life of faith, meaning we must have the ability to see and perceive those things that are in the heart of God that he desires to release into our lives. When we are walking in an acute sense of his presence, we are able to face problems, undertake tasks, meet emergencies and dedicate ourselves to the opportunities that come our way with a greater degree of fervency and zeal. Hebrews 11.6, and I'm reading from the NIV version, this, or coming from the NIV version this morning, saints. it says, but without faith it is impossible, very familiar passage of scripture, to please him, for he who comes to God must believe that he is, and that... He is a rewarder of those who diligently seeks him. Father, give us teachable minds and an understanding heart as this time does become divine. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. God desires to be with us all in, in all that we do, saints. Here is there, he is there for us no matter what it may be. You see, whether you are facing problems that seem insurmountable, undertaking various tasks, meeting emergencies, or taking advantage of opportunities that come your way, God wants you to know he is with you in all that you do. Can somebody say amen right there? Isaiah chapter 42, verse 16 says, I will lead the blind by ways they have not known. Along unfamiliar paths, I will guide them. I will turn the darkness into light before them and make the rough places smooth. These are the things I will do. I will not forsake them. And Isaiah chapter 46 verse 4 says, Even to your old age and gray hairs, I am he. I am he who will sustain you. I have made you and I will carry you. I will sustain you and I will rescue you. Saints, with this in mind, I would like to share with you some directions you need to be looking into since God's awesome hand at work in your life. Look back. Number one, point number one, look back. Philippians chapter four, verse eight. Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, very familiar passage of scripture, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, Whatever things are lovely, whatever things are good of report, if there is any virtue and if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. Take the time to, to look back over the past year of 2022 and the years prior and identify those times in which you had evidence of faith in overcoming doubts, overcoming sin, overcoming unbelief or anything else. You see, identify those times you saw yourself go from despair to courage in the midst of suffering or situations that, that seem insurmountable. As you look back and you see how the hand of God was at work in your deliverance, take the time to give him thanks 
for all that he did. Psalms 105 verse 1. Love this book of Psalms. It says, oh, give thanks to the Lord. Call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the people. Psalms 140 verse 13. Surely the righteous shall give thanks to your name. The upright shall dwell in your presence. You see, saints, as you, as you take time to, to meditate on these things and give thanks for his many blessings in your life, you will experience a fresh sense of his presence preparing you for what's yet ahead in this coming year. Point number two, saints, we need to look inward. We look back, now we're looking inward. Psalm 51, verses 6 through 8. Behold, you desire truth in inward parts. And in the hidden part, you will make me to know wisdom. Verse 7. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than, whiter than snow. Verse 8. Make me hear joy and gladness. That the, bone, but that the bones you have broken may rejoice. You see, he says, we got to take stock of ourselves. Look at, at your relationship with God. We're the second Sunday of 2023. Look at your relationship with God and with others and your stewardship over all that God has given you. We all know that everything belongs to the Lord. And it is his, and he gives as he will. Look at your relationship with God and with others and your stewardship over all that God has given you. Hold each area of your life alongside God's standards and pray to grow in faithfulness and holiness. Hold each area of your life alongside God's standards. I need to repeat that again because we try we tend to hold our lives in each area of our life to man's standards instead of God's standards. <laughs> hold each area of your life alongside God's standards. And pray to grow in faithfulness and holiness, saints. Psalms 139, verses 23 and 24. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my anxieties. And see if there is any wicked way in me. And lead me in the way everlasting. Glory to God. Psalm 26, verses 2 to 3. Examine me, O Lord, and, and prove me. Try my mind and my heart. For your loving kindness is before my eyes, and I have walked in your truth. You see, as you take time to, to look inward, you will be blessed and encouraged when you see the many areas where you did well. And yes, and you will sense great hope when you, when you sense God's help, encouragement, and, and leading in overcoming those areas that you failed in or did not accomplish. I don't like that word, fail. But it's there. Be honest with God in yourself and you shall experience a great refreshing from him. That will give you the enthusiasm you need to change, saints. What is our topic this morning? Entering into God's presence. Look back. Now we're looking inward. Acts chapter 3, verse 19 Mm. Repent, therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out, so that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord. Let's read that one more time. Repent, therefore, and be converted, that your sins, glory to God, may be blotted out, so that times of refreshing, we all need to be refreshed. 
may come from the presence of the Lord, saints. 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verses 10 and 11. For godly sorrow produces repentance, leading to salvation, not to be regretted, but the sorrow of the world produces death. There's another verse in Romans that talks about the wage of sin. They go together. For observe this very thing that you sorrowed in a godly manner. What diligence it produced in you. What clearing of yourselves. What indignation. What fear. What desire. What zeal. What vindication. In all things you prove yourselves to be clear in this matter. Point number three, we talked about looking back was point number one. Point number two was looking inward. Point number three, look to Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Amen. Hebrews chapter 12, verse one and two. Therefore, we also, since we are surrounded by so such a great cloud of witnesses. Let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us. And let us run with endurance, my God, the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross. We talked about that last week when we did communion. He endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. You see, since Jesus is the author and the finisher of our faith, saints, this means he is also at work right now in our lives. Glory to God. As long as we keep looking to him, he will find the sufficiency to move forward in the many areas we are daily being challenged in. In the midst of temptations, problems, difficulties, sorrows, various tasks and opportunities that will surely come your way during this year. Stay focused, saints. Stay focused. Stay focused on Jesus, who is the author and finisher of our faith. When times arise and become hard, stay focused on Jesus. In the middle of... Heartbreak. Trials and tribulations, temptation, stay focused on Jesus. Who is the author and finisher of our faith? He is there to help you through any circumstance you may encounter. And we will encounter some circumstances. For the Bible, for the word of God tells me to count it all joy when we go through diverse temptations. We need to count it all joy. And not live in fear. Psalm chapter 28 verse 7. The Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusted in him and I am helped. Therefore my heart greatly rejoices. Hallelujah. And with my song I will praise him. Thank you Lord. As you endeavor to stay focused on Jesus. You will encounter his presence which will give you that extra added dimension to your faith that we will encourage that we that will encourage you to boldly move forward in every area of your life as you endeavor stay focused on Jesus you will encounter his presence saints which will give you that extra added dimension to your faith that will encourage you to boldly move forward in every area of your life Hebrews chapter 13, verses 5 and 6 says, Let your conduct be without covetedness. Be content with such things as you have. Hmm. For he himself has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. We love quoting that scripture. Mm -hmm. 
Verse 6 says, so we may boldly say, the Lord is my helper, I will not fear. What can man do to me? Remember, he is your sufficiency, and you can do all things through Christ, who strengthens you daily. My, plea, my, my fourth point, look to the world. Look at the world through the eyes of Jesus and serve them with love and compassion. Getting involved in the Lord's harvest of souls keeps you in the presence of God. That's why we said last week the church, the house of God, needs to be filled. Getting involved in the Lord's harvest of souls. It's not about a political party. It's not about people. It's about souls. Your soul will live on forever. Your flesh will die someday and return to the ground or the dust or the dirt from whence it was created. It was not meant to go into a heavenly place. <laughs> Heaven is a heavenly place. Flesh cannot enter. Hell is also a heavenly place where flesh cannot enter. It is a spiritual place. Hence why your spirit will live on somewhere, someday, for all eternity. Choose whom you will serve this day. It's either you're going to serve the Lord or you're going to serve Satan. Choose wisely. Amen. John chapter 4 verse 35 says, Do, not, do you not say, there are still four months and then comes the harvest? Behold, I say to you, lift up your eyes and look at the fields, for they are already white for harvest. Thank God. Matthew chapter 9, verses 36 through 38. <clears throat> but when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion for them, because they were weary and scattered like sheep having no shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, the harvest truly is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, verse 38 of Matthew chapter 9, pray the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into this harvest. That's a very familiar passage of scripture we love to quote as well. Number four, Point number five, look forward. Philippians chapter 1 verse 6, be confident of this very thing that he who has begun a good work in you, come on somebody, will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. Be confident of this very thing, that he who has begun a good work in you, talking to you out there, will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. Because God will be with us. We can look to each new day with keen anticipation. Yes, God. Thank you, Lord. Faith calls us to move into this new year to face problems, undertake tasks, meet emergencies, and dedicate ourselves to the opportunities the year will present. We can go forth with confidence knowing that God is at work in us because why we are his children who will be led by him in, be led by him in our journey from day to day. Thank you, Lord. Proverbs 29, 18, where there is no revelation, uh, the people cast off restraint. Where there is no prophetic utterance, the people cast off restraint. But happy is he who keeps the law. You see, saints, you can enter this new year. We've already entered into the year with a sense of God's presence, if you look to him in each of these directions. We talked about five of them. Here, he is there to help you through every trial, every temptation, and task. No matter what the situation is, he is there to help you through it all. All you have to do is call upon the name of the Lord. It is just that simple. He is 
all sufficient for you this coming year. So let each of us re resolve and revolve to run with patience the race that is set before us. We're going to run that race here at the City of Refuge Church. We have a lot of things we want to do this year. We may not have the best of the best, but we have God's presence. Thank you, Lord. Looking to Jesus to find the way. He is there to meet you each and every step of the way. Amen. Amen. At this time, I'm going to turn it over to our very industrious graphic design guru, Pastor Jim Dembski, who's going to do the altar call and then uh, our tithes and our offering. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Bishop Curtis. You have to be living <laughs> very remotely, no media. You have to be living under a rock to see the chaos that is going on just in our country, just in our lovely state of Tennessee, just in the area of Nashville. The other day, Pastor, hope I get the name right, Labunga Lumenge was found murdered in his apartment complex. Every day throughout the country, throughout the world, you hear tragedy after tragedy. Self-induced, some. With all this going on, I'm taken back to, I'm 55. So I grew up in the 60s, 70s, and 80s. So I grew up with all the classic disaster movies like Poseidon Adventure, Earthquake, Towering Inferno. And I keep thinking, in all those movies, there was always one person who stepped forward and said, we have to get out of this. Okay. Pastor Curtis, Bishop Curtis said, look to Jesus, stayed focused on Jesus. Jesus is that leader in those movies. He's telling us, come to me, follow me. In all those movies, there's a handful of people that listen to that leader and survive the disaster. But the majority of the people blow that leader off and say, no, 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 we're going to stay here. Well, I'm here to tell you, you need to turn and follow Jesus. Romans 128 puts it very clearly as to what's going on in the world today. And because they did not think it worthwhile to acknowledge God, God delivered them over to a corrupt mind so that they would do what is not right. I just, every day, I just, I weep. Because I see so, so much corruption, so much evil, so much sin. You cannot sit there and say, this is not going to be a viable excuse the day that God's judgment comes. And it's coming. It could be today. It could be 10,000 years from now. But it's coming. You, you can't sit there and say, I don't believe in God. Okay. Let me go down I-65 doing 150 miles an hour, get a 1,000 tickets, and say, you know what, I, I don't believe in traffic laws. How well is that going to go? I'm not going to pay my taxes for the next 30 years, and the IRS is going to come after me. Well, I don't believe in taxes. What do you think is going to happen to me? Same thing. That day when God's wrath comes, and when it comes, it ain't going to be pretty. That's right. Take the worst scenario 
that you can think of. The worst natural disaster, man-made disaster. Multiply that infinitely. And that is going to be God's wrath. Some verses regarding that. Roman, Romans 1.18 For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. So again, you, you can't sit there and say, I don't believe. I don't believe the Bible. That's not going to fly. Okay. What's going to happen? <sighs> There's going to be a group of people following Jesus. Jesus is going to be like, God's wrath is coming, and Jesus is going to be like, Jim's with me. He's good and God wise. There's going to be a whole group of people that are going to sit there and say, but I didn't, I didn't know. I didn't believe. I didn't understand. Well, I was a good person. That's not going to fly. <laughs> to put it in simple terms, you need that VIP membership, that card, that embrace from Jesus that says, this son, this daughter is with me. And you will live with God eternally. I, I don't know how to put it any other way. I mean, it, it, God's wrath is coming. But I just laid down the very grim bad news. I'm also the bearer of the best news. Amen. That's the beautiful thing about the gospel of Jesus Christ. There is the very grim truth. You either believe it or you don't. But the best thing is the good part of the truth. You believe it, and all that bad news is gone. Just a little something. Some people will be like, okay, yes, I, I, I understand I'm leading a, not such a good life. i got to turn around. There are plenty of people out there that are leading the sheep, the naive, the ignorant. You're leading people to sin. It's the blind leading the blind. And this verse is for you. But whoever causes one of these little ones, and by little ones, it's not just children. We're all children of God, whether you're 100 years old or a day old. You're a child of God. So this goes for everybody. But whoever causes one of these little ones who believe in me, meaning Jesus, to sin, it would be better for him to have a great millstone fastened around his neck and to be drowned in the depth of the sea. A couple of things. Most people probably have never visited a good old-fashioned mill. A millstone is huge. I want to say it's probably bigger than this room. Okay, so we're not talking about you know, just a boulder. We're talking about something that weighs thousands upon thousands of pounds. Okay, so that is tied around your neck because you led people to sin, whether you did it intentionally or due to your own ignorance. It does not matter. And also, we have to remember, drowned in the depth of the sea, not a stream, not a little lake, it's not a man-made retention pond, it's the sea. I don't know the exact dimensions of the deepest sea, but I'm guessing it's miles upon miles. But again, there is good news. And it does not matter what you've done in your life. There is good news. You can be rescued from God's wrath. 
Acts 16.31. They said, Believe in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved, you and your household. Ephesians 2.8. For by the grace, by grace you have been saved through faith. And that not and that not of yourselves, it is a gift from God. We don't do anything to say, be saved. We just express faith in Jesus Christ, and we are saved. Romans 10, 9 through 10. Because if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Not maybe, not possibly, you will be saved. For with the heart, one believes and is justified. And with the mouth, one confesses is, and is saved. That's an emotional, when, you, when you're saved, you make an emotional plea to God, to Jesus. Because you realize, whether it's your life is messed up or you realize, I better do this, otherwise I'm going to be thrown in the lake of fire when my time is up. It's not just a simple, well, yeah, I guess I'll give this Jesus thing a try. No, it's a jump in the pool. I don't know whether the water is hot or cold. I'm jumping in a thousand percent. And of course, the verse that everybody knows, John 3, 16. For God loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him should not perish and have eternal life. Another quick thing. You hear some people talking about their best life now. No, my best life is to come. Because as I used to tell my mom, when I was much younger, I used to, she used to be, Jim, enjoy these times. These are the best of your life. And I'd say, Mom, if these are the best, I'd hate to see the worst. Well, you know what? My best life is yet to come. When I expire, whenever that may be, I'm going home to be with God. And I look forward to that. You... Whoever you are out there, my brother, my sister, you have an opportunity today to give your life to Christ, to avoid God's wrath. I mean, if everybody in hell, and trust me, it's pretty darn crowded down there. And there's a, probably a lot of people there that you'd be like, oh, wow, how'd he end up there? How'd she end up there? If they could have a moment of your time they would grab you by the collar and shake you and smack you until you come to your senses and say, for the love of God, seriously, make that decision. I don't want to see you here. I love you, but I don't want to see you down here. I want to know that you went up there. If you're unclear on how to turn your life over to Christ, reach out to us. We would be more than happy to pray with you, pray for you, and help you on your journey. Uh, you can call us. You can email us. Stop by here. But make that decision. You know, again, there are so many people that things happen today that they weren't expecting yesterday. And now they don't have the time to make that decision. It's not like a train or a plane that you can catch the next one, even if it's a week from now. No, that's it. It's done. So again, the good news is turn your life over to Christ. Your life is not, you're not going to be looking at rainbows and skittles falling from the sky every day, but you're going to have peace in your heart, peace in your mind, knowing that you are now looked upon as righteous in God's eyes because of Jesus.
and that should give you peace to deal with whatever circumstances you're dealing with in life. And trust me, they do come. And, you know, we're coming out of, obviously, Christmas, New Year is past. You know, I mentioned it a couple of weeks ago. As Christians, Christmas is every day. Because our life is about Christ. Every waking thought should be about Christ. And Christ, he gave the ultimate gift. He gave his life. That whoever believes in him would not perish. When it comes to tithes and offerings, I know a lot of times it's like, sometimes it's looked like, the trip to the dentist, and you're getting that extraction you don't want to. All I will say when it comes to giving is give what you can. You know, whether it's your time, your talents, we're all given, and I'm not even talking about spiritual gifts. We're all given a multitude of gifts. Many of our gifts we never experience. We never find out that we have them because we've never tried. I don't think I could ever play the piano <laughs> or sing, but if at least I tried, I don't know. Maybe I'm the world's greatest singer. I doubt it, but I have other gifts, and I try to use those for the kingdom. When it comes to giving, uh, there, I mean, you it's hard not to read a single page of the Bible without some form relating to giving. And I'm not even talking about tithes and offerings. <sighs> Exodus 35, 5. From what you have, take an offering for the Lord. Everyone who is willing is to bring to the Lord an offering. Again, You've been given so much in life. You've been given, we, all of us here online, present here in the hotel, in the neighborhood, we've been given the gift to be able to wake up this morning. So do something with that gift. Give that gift of being able to wake up this morning to the Lord. Do something for God today. Leviticus 27.30, Thus, all the tithe of the land, of the sea of the land, or the fruit of the tree, is the Lord's. It is holy to the Lord. A very famous political leader once said, that doesn't belong to you. That was by somebody else. Now, it would have been nice if that person had said, it doesn't belong to you, it's God's. But he didn't. But I will tell you. All this, everything, is God's. So use it for God. Second Chronicles 31, 12. God's people faithfully brought in the contributions, tithes, and dedicated gifts. Again, we're past Christmas time, so everybody's probably looked at the pile of gifts that they were given, and we all know. Out of the pile of gifts, there's a number of gifts that you go, oh, but why? Why did you give me this? And what do you typically do? Next year, you wrap it up. And you give it to somebody else. Well, you know what? How about you look around your neighborhood, your church, your work of place, a uh, place of work. Find somebody that could use that gift and give it to them. Amen. With that, I will pray over our tithes and offerings. But before that, on social media, the different ways to give have been posted. We're making things even easier with QR codes for those who are glued to their phones and do everything with their phones. Um, one of the easiest ways, unified giving, uh, Basically, you go to unifiedgiving.com, 
uh, backslash give backslash index backslash 13 question mark. Um, look for a city of refuge church. Uh, there's other easy ways to give. And like I said, give what you can. You know, a dollar here, 50 cents here. You know, that's all it takes. There's a lot of things that we want to do, but we need your help. We have a number of outreach opportunities that we'd like to do, but I'll be honest, we need your help. We need your money. So whatever you can do. Lord Almighty, thank you that your promises are sure, that you are faithful, and thank you, Lord, that we can rely on you. Your word says that we will find joy in offering our time, talents, and money to meet the needs of others. Again, not... When you can help somebody else, however it is, maybe you're a great mechanic and somebody's got a car that needs fixing. That's a great way to serve God. There's so many ways to serve God with our time, our talents, and our money. Father God, please help us to give freely, sacrificially, and cheerfully towards the work of your kingdom. Father, we pray you cause the seeds that we sow to grow into well-watered, fruitful trees of life. Lord, bless us and keep us. Shine your glory upon us. Give us peace through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I'd like to touch on a couple of things that we have uh, starting this week. Uh, Bishop Curtis will be starting his uh, Bible study, A Journey Through the Bible. I believe that is Wednesday evenings at 7.30 Eastern or Central Time. I will be starting Saturday morning, 8.30 Central Time, Attributes of God. And I'm so looking forward uh, to this class. I would urge everyone, if you can, try to attend both classes, because like I mentioned last week, it's like a perfect complement. Bishop Curtis is going to be doing a journey through the Bible. I'm going to be talking about the attributes of God and why they are important. And when you put those two together, it's going to be like a massive crash course um, that is just going to help people so much. Whether you're a lifelong Christian or you're not even sure if you want to be a Christian, I think a lot, of, or I know a lot of your answers are going to be, or questions are going to be answered. So looking forward to those. Um, and with that, I will turn it over to Bishop Curtis. Amen, <clears throat> Amen Pastor Dembski. Thank you so much for everything you've done this morning and the words you've spoken. Yes, we have our uh, enrichment classes starting up this week. Uh, like he said, I will be doing a journey through the Bible that starts on Wednesday night at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. And then he's doing his on um, the attributes of God mm -hmm. starting on Saturdays at 8, uh, 830, 8.30 Central. 830 Central Time. Uh, we also have another class being offered as well. Uh, Pastor Todd, Bertrand Todd the third will be also uh, teaching a class on Saturdays. His is uh, on Pacific time. He's in Oakland, California, so they're two hours behind uh, our time zone. So we'll be putting all that on our uh, website and social media platforms as well, so you can all view that. So with that being said, it was an excellent, we had an excellent day this morning. Uh, learning about entering into God's presence for 2023. We thank God for what our eyes have seen, our ears have heard. Uh, let us stand to receive our benediction as we...
close out our service this morning. Now, may the grace of our Lord and Savior rest, rule and abide, henceforth, now and forever. You're coming out and you're laying down your labor and in your leisure until that day when there is no dawn and no sunset. Hug somebody, love on somebody, let them know about the City of Refuge Church. We love you, but God loves you more. Have an awesome and blessed week. We'll see you next Sunday, live and in person, in Jesus' name. Have an awesome week. Be blessed. I got to get this.